like this to be as informal as necessary, and we'd like to provide you what information we have as we deal with our friends and our members, our missionaries in Japan. You all know that we have a substantial interest there. The whole world is concerned about this tragedy, the enormity of which seems to continue to grow and grow. So we thought we would share with you some things that we're doing, and then we'll uh, take some questions uh, following that. Uh, when this earthquake hit and the tsunami came, we would obviously have the standard concerns that we have for our missionaries, our members, expatriates, uh, members of the church and others that we have there. But of course, this uh, has, uh, it's been so extensive uh, in terms of the degree of the earthquake, uh, 9.0. And with the infrastructure being what it now is, uh, at least in the Sendai part of Japan, with transportation so limited, uh, food and power shortages, the other kinds of aftershock implications that we've had, and then I think no one counted on the radiation issue. Uh, that has been whatever was a very, very serious matter. It's made it uh, now uh, an international incident and of great concern to all of us as we have these leaks or, or proposed leaks, considered leaks at uh, three of those plants. We want to express our sympathy and support for all of the people of Japan. This is not just a concern for Latter-day Saints who are there. Uh, we have uh, great concern for everyone and our prayers are being offered for them and substantial financial help has already been committed uh, to the nation, uh, to the people, regardless of, uh, of their religious affiliation, including some directly to the Japanese Red Cross and other agencies. More will be forthcoming as needed and as uh, documented and as uh, requested. So we want you and we want the people in Japan to know that our concern is for everyone there. Now let me be a little more specific about uh, those who may be anxious about their, their loved ones uh, near here in Salt Lake City. All of our missionaries in those missions are accounted for. Uh, we have uh, every missionary is safe and uh, sound and we're grateful for the long hard work that it took to document that. Uh, people working through the day and through the night to make sure that they're accounted for. We have 638 missionaries total in Japan. About 216 of those uh, are local Japanese missionaries. Uh, 340 or 50 are from the US and uh, 50 or so from other countries, but they're all accounted for and all safe. We have taken the precaution, given the radiation issue, we have taken the precaution of moving them out of the immediate area of concern in the Sendai and Tokyo missions. We are moving missionaries steadily as we can, transportation and infrastructure being what they are, no one's panicky, and we're doing this in a calm and reasonable and uh, very optimistic way. But we're moving some missionaries to the north, we go to Hokkaido or places north, others where it's more convenient will be moved to the south from probably Nagoya on south, and we will be able to accommodate those in the other missions and the other uh, mission situations that we have there, including missionary apartments and so forth. We're doing this for a variety of reasons, obviously because the missionaries themselves we want to have out of harm's way, but it doesn't mean we're any less concerned about everyone else who's in that circumstance. But we don't want people worrying about the missionaries. All members are gonna worry about the missionaries, and we don't want any local Japanese people worrying about the missionaries if we can worry about them. We want them to take care of themselves and their own families if they can, so we're reaching out to make sure that the, in no sense are the, are the uh, American missionaries in the area any kind of an added burden. And I want to clear that we're moving all missionaries uh, of any nationality out of those immediate areas. We're also aware that there are scarce resources now, food and water and fuel will all be concerned and again we don't want anyone overly anxious about the missionaries so we want to relieve, we want to relieve them about uh, that kind of anxiety. We're moving them uh, to very safe distances. Whatever the government is saying, we're doubling or tripling that distance. If they tell us to move the missionaries uh, 30 kilometers, we're moving them 90. Uh, and uh, that's, just a, that's just a degree of safety. That's just a, a measure that we hope to take, wish to take, uh, simply for, uh, uh, for safety's sake and a good, a good margin of area. Now for the members, we're doing everything that we know how to do for them. We're having an assessment of 
all branches and all uh, wards uh, in Japan. And we're happy to say that where even with communication as limited as it is, we've been able to identify and document the safety of all members of the church except the communication with one ward and two branches in the Sendai, in the Sendai area. Uh, but given the membership of the church uh, in um, Japan, which uh, now numbers uh, something like 125,000 members, we're grateful that we've been able to document down that closely and count for the safety of those members. We know of no loss of life of a member of the church yet. That doesn't mean that we won't learn that but we don't know of any at this point, and we're very, very grateful for that. We're assessing ways to meet their needs, uh, housing needs, food needs, uh, fuel, and, and, uh, and warmth and protection. We're dealing with all of that locally and a lot of work here from, from headquarters. We're trying to keep them informed. Communication has its challenges, but we're trying to keep them informed about what's available, what can be done, uh, the kind of, uh, again, both local and international communication that we're trying to maintain with them regarding safety, regarding availability of resources, uh, places to gather, places to uh, use church buildings if they need to. Uh, all of that we're trying to make available to them. There are probably about 30 church buildings in the Sendai area that have been affected by the earthquake and the tsunami. That's not for the whole nation. It's just that northern part of Japan. And uh, we have, we have uh, assessed uh, visually, I, I'm sorry, I think I said 30. We have about 50 buildings. We've assessed each one of those visually, except one. There's only one we haven't been able to reach. So 49 of the 50, we've actually been able to be on site and visually inspect. Probably damage to half of those, but uh, nothing uh, overly serious, nothing uh, overwhelmingly substantial. Uh, so those buildings could be available for people to gather in to, to use as they might need to for protection and for safety for some food distribution and the other kinds of things that we use our, our buildings for. That's a, that's an, uh, a visual uh, review. That is certainly not a, uh, a review by any structural engineers uh, or the like, but it was a, an immediate effort to see what could be safe and available for uh, people in that area. So we're trying to deal with <clears throat> the needs of everyone in Japan to the extent that we can. That is, our concern is, is great for everyone in Japan. We'll, uh, we'll address the specifics of our own missionaries and members as best we can, but we're, we continue to stress that our concern and our prayers, our anxiety and our, our hopes, our confidence is for all the people of Japan, uh, whether they're Latter-day Saints or not, and we will continue to work with government agencies Red Cross institutions and others to make available any of the resources that we can and that we traditionally do from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.